This has been one hell of a week. The only way to describe it. I, I like to talk about what's happening in the world on this show, but I like to talk about the things not everyone is aware of and that I've discovered or maybe give insight or background information on what is happening. So we're going to start, this week's been great again. We're going to start with the Boston Bomber. I'm not going to bore you with the facts you already know, but I'm going to talk a little bit about those Boston bomb Bombers, especially the one who survived, the 19-year-old brother who is still alive. This is like an open and shut case. If you are a prosecutor, the, the, you know, the, the, the legal arm of the government that's going to put this guy in jail and maybe in, get him executed, it's almost like a case, a, as we say, a kid out of law school can win. I mean, we've got video, we've got pictures of these guys walking around before the bombing. Uh, we got them putting down the bombs in the bags. Uh, we have so much, there is so much available evidence already against them. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost open and shut. The only thing the government can do is screw it up. And I fear that they may have opened the door a bit here, maybe quite a bit. There is something called Miranda rights in this country. Since 1966, when the United States Supreme Court said that everyone that is arrested has the following rights. They have the right to be told that they can remain silent, that anything they say can and will be used in a court of law against them, that they have the right to an attorney. If they cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for them. These rights must be given at the immediate moment of arrest. Otherwise, the defendant's going to walk. The person accused is going to walk because his basic constitutional rights are violated. There are many exceptions to the Miranda uh, rule. One is to protect public safety. And apparently the government, the U.S. attorney who prosecutes the FBI, the Department of Justice have decided, have decided that the, pu uh, the public safety exemption applies. Well, it's very limited. When you get an exception under the law, it isn't broad. It's, you got, it's very narrow, and you must follow it precisely or you screw up. And the public safety exemption, exception, exemption is if there is a danger that's imminent or immediate. In other words, if these two people had other bombs planted in Boston or anywhere else, they could go off at any moment, then the government is free. With, they don't have to give these rights. They just sit the people down and talk to them and say, what's this about, all right? Because basically, once you, give, you tell people their Miranda rights, you don't have to talk, you're entitled to an attorney, no one talks. Not at that time anymore. So under the guise of this exception, because perhaps there were more bombs out there, uh, the U.S. attorney invoked the exemption, protect public safety. The problem is when you screw around like this, especially with a case that isn't that difficult to prosecute to prove, when you screw around with a case like this, you must stay when you question within the confines of the exception or the exemption. You cannot go beyond and say, well, uh, where'd you buy the stuff that you made the bombs with? Because that applies to the case of the, the, the bombs that went off the two bombs uh, during the marathon. Uh, where'd you buy the materials? Did you speak with anyone else about blo uh, blowing up uh, things at the Boston Marathon, hurting people or what have you? And if you go outside of those narrow perimeters, if you go outside, then any evidence acquired, any evidence learned, any information learned cannot be used at the time of trial against the defendant because it was in violation of his Miranda rights, his constitutional rights. The investigators went, and their questioning went beyond the narrow parameter, are there any other bombs around that are going to go off now and someone could get hurt? I'm sure my point has been made clear. I hope it's been made clear. Now, what happens here? The government says, we're going to invoke our Miranda rights. Uh, not our Miranda rights, our uh, the exception here, the public safety exception. He shot Friday. He's in the hospital Friday. He is not, he doesn't even see a judge. When you get arrested, you've got to be brought before a judge 
immediately, which means within a reasonable period of time, I'd say no more than 24 hours. All right. He isn't even brought before a judge. He's, it's 60 hours before he sees a judge, from Friday to Monday. On Monday, a federal judge comes in. Okay. In that, those 60 hours, it has now been established that the authorities, our governmental authorities, questioned this bomber for 16 hours. 16 hours. You can't tell me that within those 16 hours, they did not question outside the parameters of the exception. I would say that more than half their questions, half the time, was more than half, maybe more than 75% were spent questioning outside the parameters. They are playing with fire. They are playing with danger. Now a judge comes in on Monday. Turns out the FBI and Justice were very upset that a federal judge showed up. They didn't tell him to come and arraign him yet. Well, there is separation of government in this country, and the judiciary stands alone. They're independent from the executive and the legislature. And a federal judge, I'm sure in consultation with the chief judge, federal judge in the Boston area, and several other federal judges, it was decided they're screwing around with this guy's basic constitutional rights and failing to give him the Miranda rights. And we're going to go over and we're going to arraign him in this hospital room. Because when, when, when a person's sick in, in bed and they can't go to court who's been charged with a crime, the judge goes to the hospital room. The hospital room becomes a courtroom. A stenographer comes, they video it, they take it down in shorthand with the box and everything else. But the judge went on his own and they're upset with that because they weren't done questioning. Uh, well, he is told, the defendant in bed. By the way, picture this, will you please? He's been in bed since Friday. He has been seriously injured. He cannot talk. During those 16 hours that he's being questioned, he's writing the answers. Once he mouthed a note, a no, N O, but didn't say the word. Just he's got a tube up his nose going into his stomach. He's got tubes every place else on his body. It said he may be paralyzed. He's heavily medicated. They've got pain kills up the gazoo in him. All right, and they question him. I have never seen such a sloppy irresponsible scenario in my 50 years of practicing law. You just don't do that. My God, if I did this in New York, I, they'd bring me up before the Bar Association. That's bad stuff when you do this. I think the government stepped over the line. Anyhow, the judge comes in. Not only does the judge come in, he brings two public defenders to represent this guy. And the judge says, you don't have to speak. You're entitled to an attorney. And guess what? He has not spoken to anyone on the prosecution side, the government side, since the judge came in. When he heard his Miranda rights, he shut up. When he got his lawyers, he shut up, because the lawyers are going to tell you not to talk. And that was the end of the questioning. Uh, now, stupidly handled. Stupidly handled. And if this case is blown, okay, it's blown because of the failure to give the Miranda rights and to question him the way they were doing. He has, he has, he's been charged with murder, as you know, because he used a weapon of mass destruction, a bomb. He now has been appointed the lawyer, his numero uno, his number one lawyer, a Miriam Conrad. She has 20 years experience as a public defender. She's a Harvard Law graduate. She's tough. She's had these capital cases before where someone could, could die as a result of the crime they're being charged with. She represented the shoe bomber, I think his name was Reed, uh, a few years back. She knows what she's doing. She's a tough advocate. And believe me, she's going to raise all these Miranda issues, as she rightfully must so, and this fellow's entitled to. Let us never forget that this bomber, 19 years old, is an American citizen. He, I don't care how many people he killed, how many people he maimed, he has the same rights as all of us. He is an American citizen and entitled to the basic rights of an attorney, a judge, and I don't have to tell you anything if I don't want to. And no one's ever given him those rights till Monday when the federal judge went and says, this is what's going to happen now. I'm going to arraign him. Stay with me, folks. I will be back for the next segment in a moment.